Hello, welcome once again to another edition of the Coach's Corner program. We kind of transitioned from football. Now we'll be talking basketball for the past uh, several months. And Head Coach uh, Donnie Worstel uh, joins me for this segment. Donnie, welcome back for another year. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, kind of the preseason expectations and so forth. Uh, last year didn't obviously quite go as you would have liked. Right, right. Uh, speaking about last year for a few minutes, we had... Uh, you know, a very athletic group, that, but we just uh, we were riddled with injuries and just couldn't seem to to find our stride. And uh, you know, and then the year gets away from you. So we ended up with a six and seventeen mark that uh, none of us were pleased with. Uh, several kids returned from that team. Uh, we're a very athletic group again. I like our. We're a little longer than what we've been in the past, uh, which is always nice to see, and uh, a really fun. Uh, engaged team to to coach so far in the preseason. Yeah, as you look, and again, we're only, you know, in your case, one game in. Right. A couple teams have had a couple games. Uh, certainly, pleasant, strong team last year. They bring a lot of people back. River Valley's off to a a very good start. You got a new team in Shelby. They're going to be strong. It's going to be a very competitive MOAC this year. I agree. I agree. I've seen. Uh, as you said, Clear Fork, Pleasant are both uh, returning a lot of very good players. They're going to be strong. Uh, I've seen River Valley play, and, and Coach Egan's done a marvelous job there. They are really competing at a high level. Uh, and then I also scouted Shelby already, and they are, uh, they are the real deal. They're a very, very big athletic team. Uh, the league is going to be a battle every night. Good. As far as your scrimmages, who did you scrimmage this year? Uh, we started out... Uh, uh, pretty good scrimmage schedule you know I, I was very very pleased with the the people that we played our final our final scrimmage was at Norwalk with uh, Steve Gray's team yeah. that was fun uh, you know Steve and I go He's way back around uh, a while <laughs> yes I was his JV coach years ago so uh, uh, that was there were five teams there it was a very good scrimmage Medina Buckeye um, Fostori or not Fostoria um, Norwalk, of course. And it was just a very, very good scrimmage. Um, Lorraine Clearview was at that scrimmage, and uh, the team I'm searching for. I, 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 can't, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't think of it right now. But uh, they're, they're not in our viewing area. They're, they're so not in our viewing area. So it, it was a very good scrimmage. Uh, prior to that, we were at Bell Fountain. Bell Fountain had a, a very nice, uh, very nice point guard uh, and a very well coached team. So we got had a nice scrimmage at Bell Fountain. Uh, we had our annual alumni game the night before Thanksgiving, and that always gives us a really good look as well. So it, it was a good preseason for us. Okay, very good. We come back, we'll take a look at some of the highlights from the uh, contest last week. We'll preview the upcoming week ahead for Marion Hardy, and we'll be back right after these words. <laughs> Once again, back on the Coach's Corner program. Coach, uh, you opened up uh, last week. Uh, it's going to be, as I recall, a Saturday evening game. Right. A few people wanted to watch the Ohio State game, <laughs> so you moved it up to an afternoon game. Yes, for sure. We all want to see the Buckeyes. That was a, another fun game to watch. What a you know, great season from them. And, uh, of course, we hear today that Urban Meyer's yep. hanging it up. Hopefully his health is okay, and yep. it's just a – you know, a, a much needed break for him, I'm sure. Yeah, it did not come as a shock to, I think, a lot of, a lot uh, agreed. of people. I agree. Talk a little bit about the game last week. Uh, you know, coming in, we opened up with Olin Tangy Orange here at home. Uh, Orange is an extremely skilled team. They have, they're very well coached. They are a very perimeter-oriented team. They shoot it and pass it extremely well. Uh, the big surprise in the game was their ability to rebound the basketball. We, uh, you know, being the opener for us, they had played the night before against New Albany and beat – uh, beat New Albany on Friday night, um, and then as we come in for our game, you know that opening game. I think sometimes there's an adjustment that has to happen with kids. The speed mm -hmm. of the game, and and they jump out on us early, and it was just a, a speed, 
a speed of play. And, and, and I don't think their kids are faster or more athletic. They're, they're certainly not. And it was our kids needed to make that adjustment. It took us a little too long to adjust to it. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from the contest last week. It's always exciting to play at home. You know, we open up here, and uh, as we said, the crowd was pretty good considering we moved the game into the afternoon. First highlight, you know, Aiden with a really impressive block. I love what I love most about that play is that he, you know, he possessed the basketball. We got it kicked ahead, and, and Dejon, who you'll talk to in the next segment, just had a, a beautiful take to the basket. You mentioned Aiden, one of the younger kids on the team before yeah. he's got a lot of basketball background yes he does uh, he saw a good steal from Gary there uh, Gary Money with a good steal and then us taking it out of bounds we got a caught him on a little surprise there I think that little alley-oop to the basket for Aiden we're trying to spread him out here a little bit to get just that Tobias Thompson Reese on a, a very athletic take a little pull up in the in the paint really like how strong he was that he was on two feet on that finish And there we get a nice spray ahead. Lane Stevens sees um, Tobias ahead, sprays it ahead for an easy layup. Lane had a busy Saturday because he pushed a peanut <laughs> last Saturday morning in the peanut push. Yes, he did. Uh, that move right there I really love. Is, uh, it's a move that we practice. Um, we call it a, a pivot away. And Dijon really got deep in the paint and then created space for his jumper with that pivot. Good post feed here. Again, Tobias with a very quick move around the basket. Again, finishing on two feet, uh, very strong. That's uh, the young man that drove it right there. The, uh, the first drive, number three for Owen Tangy Orange, is Luke Ballinger. His father went to Pleasant, Eric. Yeah. Um, but they're scoring for us, uh, Jacob Malone. We had a good spray ahead, and he got a break a breakout basket. There's another highlight that we really like, something that we work on in practice. We post-fed the ball and uh, drew the defense in and kicked it out for a rhythm three. And it was really a good play. Darnell Flournoy on a slip screen, sets a ball screen and kind of slips, uh, tricked the defense a little bit, makes a nice catch. Uh, missed the first one, but stuck with it, got his own rebound and put it back in with some strength. Um, there were a lot of highlights in this game. We. Again, we had two runs that we gave up, a 9-0 to start the game. And again, I think it's just we were surprised by the, the speed of play. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I guess uh, you know, we had a great practice yesterday. We're addressing that. And I think uh, we were also surprised at their effort to the boards. They out-hustled us on the glass. And we pride ourselves in how hard we play and, mm -hmm. and the effort that we give when we, when we play. And uh, we were out hustled on the glass Saturday afternoon. So um, we're watching it on film. We're correcting it in practice. And uh, it's not going to happen again. Yeah. Well, and that's one, you know, coaches, I mean, yeah, you're going to miss some shots. Uh, you're going to have some turnovers. But most coaches will not accept less than 100%. And I know you're one of those coaches that demands 100%. We try to, for sure. You know, you get, I think in basketball, in life, and anything you do, you have to do your best. And if you're not doing your best, then then you should think about trying something else. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, we, we were not happy with that, that portion. The, the highlights, the things that have translated from practice to game, uh, we're very happy with. The, the coachability of our team, the quality of character on our team, uh, right now the, the character level of our kids, we're very excited about. We're, and we're having fun with this group, um, but those – the things that caused us to lose, the inability to, to execute the checkouts and rebound the basketball and being out hustled on the glass, those are things that we can fix and, and we intend to. Uh, how deep do you go on the bench? Right now we have 12 varsity players and uh, I have no, no problem putting any one of them in. Um, another thing that I think hurt us just a little bit Saturday is we don't have a rotation yet. You know, that's my job to figure that out. and. We're working on it, but I've also got to let kids earn their minutes, and mm -hmm. it, it's, an, it's an evolution every year. You evolve into the team you're going to eventually become. You know, if, uh, if all those decisions were made in preseason, then, you know, I think it would be hard to, 
you know, there needs to be a carrot that's dangled yeah. every day in practice to, mm -hmm. to improve. If you're improving, your minutes can increase. And if you're trying to do things right and you're outworking people, then your minutes should change and it fluctuates. So, you know, that's an, that's an evolution and uh, one that we have to settle into a little bit, but not so much that we take away the incentive to, to improve daily. Do you have most of your coaching staff back? We do. We do. We're, uh, um, Coach Ellis, Dustin Ellis is my varsity assistant. Um, a lot of people in the Marion area probably don't know him. I brought him with me from Columbus when I came back to the area, but uh, he's the best teacher I've ever seen. Um, he teaches our, our calculus kids here at Harding. He teaches our global logistics program. And, you know, the global logistics, they bring in people from our community to watch their presentations and things. And he is the best teacher that I've ever seen. Uh, he's fantastic. So he does a great job in basketball as well. You know, if you can teach calculus to kids, you can certainly yeah, teach basketball. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so so he's, he's fantastic. And then John Schroeder's back with us this year. He had uh, a few health issues last year that kept him away, uh, but he's healthy and, and we're certainly happy to have him back. Um, we did lose one coach. Uh, Isaiah Twine was our JV coach. And Isaiah is back in school getting his master's degree. And uh, as much as we miss him, we're very proud of him as, as well. Uh, Top-notch young man that's just getting more education. So it's fantastic. We've moved Michael Matthew from our freshman team mm -hmm. uh, to our JV. And then we've added Cody Hecker. Cody Hecker's a yeah. Harding alum, uh, decorated player here at Harding. And he's coaching our freshman team uh, along with uh, Harding uh, Marion area staple Doug Verdon. Mm -hmm. Doug's uh, you know done this for forever and ever and he's uh, providing some experience to the freshman staff and helping Cody with that team. Yeah, very good. Welcome back. We'll have more on our Coach's Corner program right after these words. Once again, back on the Coach's Corner program, this is the segment where we talk to uh, one or more players, and we have senior co-captain uh, Dejon Smith joining me for this segment, and uh, you're a senior. Uh, kind of talk a little bit about uh, what it means to be a senior on the program for this year. Um, being a senior for the program this year means a lot. Uh, having the younger guys look up to you, uh, every decision you make, they're looking at you. And, yeah. You're one of the co-captains, co co obviously. That means the coaching staff has a, a lot of faith in your ability. What's it mean to be a, a captain on the team? Uh, it plays a big role. Uh, it's a lot of responsibility. You just got to take ownership of it. And being a captain, making sure other people can be captains as well. It's not just one or two people. So you're trying to have the younger guys lead up to you. Yeah, you were kind of one of the go-to guys last year. Kind of talk a little bit about being a senior this year and, and maybe what you did maybe during the off offseason uh, to kind of get ready for your senior year. Uh, during my senior – well, during the off offseason, uh, it was really workouts in summer leagues, and we had a bunch of, like, um, workouts for, like, certain things. Like, we had shooting that we really needed to work on that last year. Rebounding is a big part of this year as well. Talk a little bit about uh, any goals that you maybe have set either for yourself or for the team this year. For the team, most of us have decided to try and take the MOAC, even though the schedule keeps getting tougher and tougher. All right. You've had one game under your belt so far. Kind of talk a little bit how you felt in that first game. First game, uh, we had positive attitudes coming out at first. Uh, obviously, didn't go as we wanted to. Um, practice coaches and players also agreed that we need to go harder intensity higher and we did we really got out rebounded that was really a big factor of the game so we've been working on that a lot 
Okay, mm -hmm. you as yourself, uh, individually, what do you think your strong suit is? Uh, driving the basketball. Okay, and maybe your weakness that you have to work on? Shooting a lot better. Okay, well, hopefully the shooting percentages will be a little higher this year. Appreciate you being on, and the best luck throughout the course of the season. Thank you. We'll be back with more on our Coach's Corner program right after these words. This is me, and this is my teacher, Miss C. She's so great. She teaches me a lot of good stuff. She taught me that everything I do starts with me. I'm in charge. She taught me to have a plan and make sure I do all my work before I play. I also learned how to play well with others. I try to remember that everyone can win. And I listen before I talk. That makes working together a lot more fun. I know that balance feels best, so I remember to take care of myself. Miss C taught me lots of things, but the best one ever is that I can be great. What if every child had the same opportunity? The opportunity to develop the essential life skills and characteristics students need to thrive in the 21st century. The Leader in Me process provides the teacher experience and classroom implementation tools to put your school on the path to greatness. As you integrate timeless principles into your school's core curriculum and language, you will build student self-confidence, reduce discipline referrals, and increase academic achievement. Find out more at theleaderinme.org. Great happens here. Once again, back on the Coaches Corner program, of course, a reminder that you can catch the uh, Coaches Corner program uh, every week uh, throughout the high school basketball season. Coach started out last week. Again, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, needing a little bit more hustle, a little bit more uh, effort. You mentioned a good practice uh, yesterday. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, the first couple of weeks, would you rather play a couple of games a week or do you like just playing maybe a game a week to start out? I prefer uh, a slow starting schedule so that, you know, we have film now, we know what our, our warts or our weaknesses are, and we can really get to work on them, and we've got a little bit of practice time. Uh, the kids, I think, would tell you the opposite. They would rather play games and practice less, uh, but uh, this time of year, I think it's important to, uh, you install things, you work on things, and then you play, and you find out what's working and what isn't, and where the attention needs to be. Okay, got a home game Friday night? We're at, at Ontario. Friday. At Ontario, okay. Yes, at Ontario Friday. All right. You had a chance to see them at all? I haven't. Uh, I've looked at, they haven't played yet. They were okay. supposed to play Norwalk in an opener, and Norwalk was deep in the, the football, football playoffs. Yeah. So uh, so they moved that game. Um, you know, we'll look at last year's film, and um, Coach baylog has been there forever and ever. Mm -hmm. I'm sure not a lot's going to change. Uh, we won't know, we won't have individual information, but... We'll have team. We know what they'll do team-wise. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Hope we can get it turned around. We'll have a win to talk about next week. I look forward to it. It's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Coach's Corner Program. For Head Coach Donnie Worstel, I'm Jeff Ruth.